G'day people. Today is a special day. First of all, I am going to make my pasta al forno con pesce e limone or baked pasta with fish and preserved lemons. Very special dish. I invented it. I believe I invented it. If someone else can prove me wrong, go ahead. Uh, fantastic dish. Super savoury. Incredible. Today is also special because, excuse me while I drink beer, I've just finished the second tranche of my scientist's genesis. The story of the creation of the universe, the stars, and the planets, and eventually life itself as envisaged by a god. But here's where my version differs from the traditional. In my version, the laws of physics are chosen by God and the laws of physics must be obeyed. So God cannot simply make, wave the magic wand and, and make whatever he likes. He has to follow the laws of physics. So there's a lot of physics in it. It's very, 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 very deep into physics. You know, I talk about inflation. I talk about dark matter. Uh, you know, God has problems with dark matter. I go into all this detail, right? I don't think anyone else has done anything like this. And I have the whole thing illustrated uh, according to my instructions by AIs, the modern AIs that illustrate things. Incredible. Incredible pictures. You know, so many pictures of God. Fantastic. Fantastic. God, galaxies, the universe, whatever I wanted, AI came up with. So, it's an incredible thing and I know that, uh, you know, there's just no one else that it does this kind of stuff uh, to the level that I do it and today is the day I've just finished the second tranche right? the first tranche was it was a day a day or two ago the second this is the second tranche I just finished it you know it's it's a huge thing in one day I did the whole the whole all the chap the whole chapter of uh, the creation of the galaxies and the stars and all and all the trouble there was getting all the trouble God had to go to to get the thing to work properly, you know, and the punishment for breaking the rules. It's a deep thing. It's a deep thing, and you know, other people don't don't know what it's like. But I can just tell you, and you'll and you'll never know what it's like to, to create something like that. But I can tell you, it's 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 an overwhelming experience. It's almost overwhelming, even for me, right, to create something like that. I've done a lot of great things like that. That you know, you people have got no idea what it's like to create something really huge. I've done it quite a bit of it, and it's overwhelming. Every time you do it, every time I do it, it's overwhelming. And today's like that. So I'm a mixture of, I'm a mixture of tired, you know, mentally exhausted, and yet at the same time exhilarated, right? Because I've given birth to something incredible, right? Man, that's the way it is. It's incredible. I mean, go check it out. I'll put a link in the description and you can have a look. Is Mr. Mars full of shit? Is he up his own ass? Let's go and find out. Go and have a look. Tell me what you think. Put it in the comments. I mean, I believe it's incredible, but am I, am I just full of it? I don't think so. I think it really is. Anyway, so I'm on this, I'm on a high, but I'm also tired. So it's weird, it's a weird, um, mixture of, of conditions. Uh, and, now, <laughs> and now here I am, I've got to uh, produce this amazing new dish that I've invented, right? So bear with me, I'll do the best I can. Hopefully, I'll, hopefully it'll be good. Hopefully I'll, I won't stuff it up. I hope, right? <sighs> so this is my third beer, but you know, I'll probably get onto four by the time we finish this thing. So, 
Fear of beginning. And we'll start by weighing out 320 grams of spirali. Now it doesn't. Oop, too much. Too much, Mr. Mars. Get your act together. Okay, you're on a high and you're tired and all the rest, but just get it right. So it doesn't have to be spirali, but it has to be some kind of pasta that, that is bite size and doesn't stick to it, doesn't, um, doesn't nest in itself. I did make it with shells, and you know, shells are nice, but they nest, they nest in themselves, and that's no good. You don't want that. So, uh, Spirale is a good choice. That's like rigatoni is probably a good choice too. Pen there, good choice. Any other, anything like that that's that's bite-sized and doesn't sit and doesn't nest in itself is a good choice. So I'm just going to get that on the boil. I'll put in a couple of uh, salt spoons of, of salt, like that. Then we'll get cracking on the rest. Eh, what a day! What a day. I can't tell you how incredible it is to work with AI. Like, I've done, the stuff I've done with music and the stuff I've done with art, with AI, it's just truly amazing. It's just ridiculous what, what AI can do in those areas. Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, this is it, this is the end of human civilization, people. We're moving on to AI civilization after this. 2024, the year it began. Yeah, plenty of water. Don't muck around. Plenty of water. And on it goes. On it goes. Now, um, a lot of Italian cooks, maybe all Italian cooks, put an awful lot of salt in their pasta. Like, a lot. Mm. Dessert spoonful. A tablespoonful. That's I mean, a lot. A dessert spoon or a, a tablespoon of salt. 20, you know, 20 grams of, 20 mils of salt. Madness. Surely, surely it's madness. It's got to be too much. Sure. Anyway, not my problem. <laughs> not my problem. So what I'm going to do here, oh, first of all, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, dice up an onion. Whew. Man. You people have got no idea what it's like to be me. The reason, and the reason, really this kind of, this high, I suppose, is the reason I am me. Because once you've done something, something incredible that no one else has done, which hardly anyone does, right? It's so rare. But it happens to me quite a bit. I do it a lot. And uh, it's, a, it's a high, you know, it makes you feel incredible. And you'll never, you'll, most of you will never understand, will never experience it, so you won't know, but I could just tell you what it's like. No, it's, a, it's an amazing experience. Amazing experience. And you know, but at the end of the day, it's just another experience. It's just another one to add to the list. So, have a beer, enjoy the experience, move on next day. Next day, I'll be moving on. Been there, done that. No. Yeah, yeah. I'll write the new Bible. Don't let it, don't let it worry you. Couple of 
couple of um, tablespoons of olive oil. Don't want to go too mad with the olive oil. I assure you, don't go too mad because we're going to be adding anchovies, which have got a lot of oil in them. I did put quite a lot of oil in the first version I made. I think it was too much. You don't need too much, but you want a reasonable amount. Yeah. At least a couple of tablespoons. I'll say two tablespoons. It's a good idea to... Uh, when I first did this, I didn't use potato. But I realised I needed something with, something, uh, with that sort of neutral body in it. Like potato. So I used potato and... Yes, it, it, filled the, it filled the gap. There was a, a sort of a gap in the flavour profile. You want to dice it pretty fine. Like, you know, half a centimetre, half a centimetre cubes is what you want. Pretty fine because, yeah, it's going to be cooked in the oven for a half an hour or so but uh, you know it takes a while for the heat to penetrate and it's probably enough but you don't you definitely don't want raw potato right you want you want your potato to be cooked so half a centimetre cubes will cook pretty quick Pretty quick. We're going to even put them in there. Let's put them in there. Don't muck around. Oh. <laughs> Salute. chilies. Dried crushed chilies. Fantastic. This recipe is supposed to be a bit hot, right? Chili wise, a bit hot. Secret ingredient, preserved lemons. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll go get my I'll go get my phone and I'll photograph these in detail so you get a nice close-up. Just give me give me a sec. Secret ingredient. Now these are uh, just simply lemons that have been lemons that have been uh, cut into quarters and preserved in salt. And when I say salt, I mean a lot of salt. Really, a lot of salt. Like completely covered in salt really covered in salt and then submerged in water with loads of salt and kept like that for um, a few months. What we do is we just 
cut off the pulp, which is, the pulp is extremely salty. Extremely. Hang on. It's lemony, yes, but it's so salty. Inedible, in my opinion. <coughs> So, we cut off the, the pulp and we wash the rind. Now, God damn that was salty. So bloody salty. So incredibly salty. But these things are so lemony. Like the flavor you get by putting the preserved lemon, letting it sit there for a couple of months, is unbelievable. The amount of the, the lemoniness you get out of it. You cannot get that kind of lemoniness through normal techniques. You have to, you have to preserve the lemon, and then by golly, is it ever lemony? <laughs> It's super lemony. It's lemony in a way that you can't imagine. If you, if you haven't grown up with preserved lemons, like preserved lemons are an Arabic thing, right? Northern, from North Africa, anywhere around North Africa in the Mediterranean, they know their preserved lemons, like Morocco and wherever else. They know their preserved lemons. They know how good they are. And it's really easy to do. You just... <laughs> Cut lemons in the quarters, cover them in salt, squish them down hard, squish them down hard and um, put, cover them in, in water and salt, a lot of salt, right, for a couple of months. And so much salt they won't go off. And they just develop incredible flavour, absolutely incredible flavour. I, I was completely blown away. I, I was watching it on watching it on YouTube, watching people do it. I don't know Moroccans or something do it, and I thought, well, it's easy to try. I'll just give it a go, and it is really easy to try. And then when I first tried them, my god, the flavour, unbelievable! Ongelooflijk. So, let's throw this preserved lemon in. Next thing, I'll put this away. So, you can store your preserved lemon in the fridge or you can store it in the, just in room temperature. I mean, it's, it's salt, covered. it's absolutely covered in salt. It's not gonna matter, right? Not gonna matter significantly, I wouldn't think. I'm sure it doesn't. I know it doesn't because I've tried it both ways. So you know you can leave it in the fridge if you want, or you can put it. Let's leave it out. Doesn't matter. All right. Let's crush some garlic. So a bit more. Let's get the skin off. Oh dear! What a day! What a day! My God! I've had so many days like this, like working on Lord of the Rings music. You you can't understand. You haven't done it. You don't know what it's like. Like, but it's amazing. Like other people don't know what you've done, right? They don't know it's any good. And very often the entire world doesn't know, but you know. You know because you feel it. You feel it. I mean, how do you think Handel felt when he finished the Messiah? Do you think he didn't know what he'd done? I guarantee you he knew what he was done. I guarantee you he knew what he had done. Give me a fork. Let's try this. 
this uh, spirali. Actually, for once, not salty enough. So, maybe because I had so many, I had like 300 grams of it. No, 320 grams of it. When you're dealing with that sort of quantity, you do need more salt. Now I've got some fish here. Again, this is the bass of the uh, Vietnamese catfish. And it's about 300 grams. So two fillets. Two fillets, which is about 300 grams. Now we just just slice it into about, uh, you know, roughly one centimeter, one centimeter cubes. Roughly, it's not critical. Just roughly. And you don't have to use. Vietnamese catfish, you can use whatever you like. But you want to use some sort of uh, mildly flavoured, mildly flavoured white flesh fish, which is probably most fish, truth be known. Right. So, chuck, chuck the fish in. We're nearly, we're nearly ready, you know. It's it's an easy recipe. It's not super easy, but it's reasonably easy. All right, all righty. So we just just get the fish. Fish just starting to cook. You don't have to. You don't want to really fully cook it because you don't want to overcook it, right? And when you put it in the oven, it's going to continue cooking for quite for the whole time it's in the oven. So it doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be cooked before you start, and it shouldn't. It probably shouldn't be cooked before you start. Let's have a look at it. Let's have a look before we put all this mess in the oven. Oh, this bloody stupid phone again. I've got water on my finger, it won't recognise my fingerprint. Bloody stupid. Stupid, mate. Right, there it is. You can see the fish is cooking, and you can see the preserved lemon, and you can also see that the Pasta is ready to take out, so let's take the pasta out. Like so, I'll put it in the colander. Like so, we just need a casserole dish. Oh, I forgot one thing. Should have done this earlier. So you want some anchovies? One. Oh god, come on. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six anchovies. I love anchovies. And the oil. The oil they come in is just fantastic. So make sure you suck the oil off your <laughs> suck the oil off your fingers after you've pulled an anchovy out. Great, really good.
can smell the preserved lemon. And until you've used it, like, I don't know if you can buy it, but you don't need to buy it, just make it. It's easy to make. All you need is a jar, some lemons and some and some salt, you know, and water. It's really easy. So the anchovies are mixed in. Mix the pasta in. Now normally, hang on, let's move that. Normally I would normally I put salt in it, right? But because the preserved lemon is so salty, like it's you know, it's salty beyond belief. Uh, even though I did wash the rind, so most of the salt was washed away, but not all of it. So that's why I haven't put salt in, extra salt in. So, but you can, if you want to, put extra salt. You know, but the time to do that would be when you are plating it up, you know, or when it's on your plate. That's the time to put the salt in. Now I'm just going to put in, at this point I'm just going to put some mozzarella in. Um, so you're wondering why, I put, why I'm going to put mozzarella in. It's a bit like the potato, you know, it adds to just, just a good handful of mozzarella, right? One hand. It's like the mozzarella. It's like the um, like the potato. It adds some sort of nice body, a bit of creaminess. Good. Like you don't want to go too stupid. It's not all about the mozzarella. The, the mo and the, you won't really taste the mozzarella. <coughs> the mozzarella has a has a um, mild flavour anyway. It's just there to give a sort of body to it, a nice comforting, a comforting middle ground, you know, middle, mid-pitch. If we use the musical analogy, which I tend to use with, uh, with cooking, I tend to use the musical analogy, uh, you know, mid-pitch, mid like, so alto range would be mozzarella. Altos and tenors would be mozzarella. You know, and the uh, soprano would be the would be the lemon, and the base would be the chili, and the anchovies, and the fish should be mid range as well. Fish should, fish should be tenor. All right, so it all nice, nicely fits in, no problem, all good, and we. Run out of time again. You know, the dickhead, dickhead at Nikon who decided, oh, we'll just make the camera shut off after half an hour because nobody wants to film anything more than half an hour, right? You know, that dickhead, I mean, like, I'd like to take his head off. You know, uh, it's not acceptable. Look at the trouble you've caused. Trouble, of course, because you're an idiot. I mean, there's no reason to limit people to half an hour. It's completely stupid. Absolutely stupid. And I would have thought that a reputable, world-leading company like Nikon wouldn't have been so stupid. But by golly, they are. They bloody are. And it's true for every bloody company. They're all so damn stupid. 
I don't know if you've noticed, but Google are a bunch of morons. Absolute morons. As well as being unprincipled, amoral, pains in the ass, they're also morons. They're not just amoral, they're also stupid. Stupid, guys. Stupid. Trust me, they're idiots. Now, the bigger they get, the stupider they get. The big fat companies, now, they can, they've got all the money in the world, they can hire whoever they want, It doesn't matter, because the people at the top are fuckwits. Are you listening Google? Microsoft? Woolworths? Coles? Anyone you can think of. Any big company, all fuckwits. People at the top, fucking idiots. Trust me, they are. I don't care if they've all got fucking PhDs in commerce. It doesn't matter. Because they, all they do is fuck companies up and fuck over cus, customers, give everyone a hard time, and in the end, the company fails because they haven't looked after their customers. But they don't care about the customers. That's not their problem. They don't think it's their problem. Because they're going to be gone in five years. And so when the company fails, it won't be their heads that roll. You know, but it should be. Anyway, I'll be back in half an hour to eat this. Wow. I just read my work of today and it's, it is really something, I tell you. It's an incredible thing. Incredible thing. Who knows where it will lead? Anyway, it's time to eat. So I, I cooked this in the oven for about 15 minutes with the lid off to let the cheese melt on top. And then another 15 minutes with the lid on, so that I didn't burn the cheese. Let's see what it's like, eh? Let's see what it's like. Oh, look, I can, I can smell the preserved lemon. It's, you know, those of you who've never used preserved lemon, those of you who have used preserved lemon, you know what I'm talking about. You know, right? I don't need to explain it to you because you know. All right. Wow. And the mozzarella just is in the middle there. It's all good. It's not too much mozzarella. Oh, it's just every time that a um, you know I get a waft, a waft of the steam, I get the smell of preserved lemon. Wow. All right. Here it is, folks. Baked pasta. Baked pasta with fish and preserved lemon. Oh, yeah. All right, let's get a photo. It's a bit of a critical photo. Don't steam up the lens. Oh, steam up the lens. Let's try that again. Let's not steam up the lens. All right. So you should be able to see the uh, the white fish. The white fish, the yellow stuff will be lemon if you can see it, preserved lemon. But it's incredibly concentrated. Preserved lemon is incredibly concentrated. So like there was only three quarters and it, with those three quarters of lemon were just the rind, right? So not a lot, but Mm -hmm. Did 
I put too much preserved lemon in? Just a three quarters. Was that too much? Oh. It's incredible. Fucking incredible. Now, here I am a nobody. Mr. Mars, Mr. Nobody. Today I created the new Bible. And here I am, I've invented this amazing fake pasta. It's truly incredible. It's an absolute, absolute taste, absolute riot for the taste bud. It got chilli, I put a heat teaspoon of chilli, so it's got a little bit of bite, a little bit. Not too much, but a bit, you know? You feel it. It bite the back of your throat a bit. The softness of the pasta. The intensity, the intensity of the preserved lemon. It's just lemon, lemon. It fucking knocks you, you know, lemon. Lemon. It's just saying lemon, right? But at the same time, now let's cut that. At the same time, and you've got the, you've got the faint, the comforting, the comforting, soft, softness and. An affection of the mozzarella, you know. It's in there, he doesn't dominate the flavour, you don't really taste it so much, but it's in there in the, it's there in the body, you know, it surrounds the the pasta and just gives that little bit of body, it's really nice. And then there's the, the cheddar on top, you know, which is again cheese and again comforting. And it's really nice. Um, and there's the potato. The potato, it's in there. It's not dominating, but you can taste it. You know when you're eating potato, right? It tastes like potato. And believe it or not, it goes fantastically well, fantastically well with the fish. And everything else. All this stuff goes really well. <laughs> it's incredible. Oh, wow. Wow. you got no idea. It's just amazing. It'll knock your, knock your bloody socks off. It's... The fish, right? The fish is the core of the whole thing, right? <laughs> One of the mildest flavours in it, but it's the core, the fish. Wow. The fish holds it all together. There's 300 grams of fish in this. There's more fish in this than, there's almost as much fish in this as there is pasta. Raw pasta, right? There's a lot of fish in it. So it's, it's quite a lot of fish. And it, you know, fish is uh, very nutritious and um, high in protein, very high in protein. It's fantastic. But you don't really, the fish doesn't knock you down. You know, fish is mild. The flavour doesn't knock you down. It doesn't knock you down, but it's there. And because of the way I've designed this dish, the really strong notes, right? You've got the strong, the really strong lemon, right? Fantastic. It's really strong lemon. It's a high note. And you've got the the chili, right? Which is bite, you know, you feel, feel it in your throat. Bite. It's a low note. 
The fish is in the middle, you see? The fish is in the middle. So that middle note is not, even though there's strong notes above it and below it, it's not overwhelmed by those strong notes. You can still taste it because it's not surrounded by strong middle notes. Like if you put beef in it or something, then it would be overwhelmed, but you don't. In the middle, there's the fish, mozzarella, the cheddar, the onion, right? None of those are strong. None of them. So, mm. Mm. so what you get is this beautiful harmonized mellow center, middle notes. Fish, mozzarella, cheese, the onion. Nice and mellow in the middle. And then above it and below it, these strong notes. Bah, 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 right? But it's in the middle. So you get this great combination. Honestly, guys, guys and girls, it's absolutely fantastic. I'm not just saying that. It's amazing. Now, um, I dreamt this up one night, you know. I think I was in bed and I was thinking, what can I do? What can I do with pastel for no, that hasn't been done, right? I don't even know if, ha if this hasn't been done. Maybe someone has done it, right? But... Oh. That lemon. I just can't tell you how great... How great this stuff is. Like, it's just lemon. But when you preserve it like that with the salt, it just develops this incredible flavor. It's absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. Mm. I'm drinking VB, maybe for the last time. It's definitely not my favorite beer. But I'm an Australian, I was originally a Melbourneian, so I do feel some allegiance to Carlton United Breweries and to VB. And VB is probably their best beer. I really can't drink any of the others. Carlton Draft is bloody horrible. And quite frankly, VB, uh, it's not great. I mean, really, Carlton United, what are you doing? You're driving your own people away. I'm a Melbourneian and you're driving me, I was a Melbourneian, and you're driving me away. CUB, what do you care? You don't care, do you? So, you know, I'll just be drinking sap at all and, and uh, you know, what else, whatever else I can get my hands on. Like, it'd be nice to get some imported Heineken. It'd be nice to get some imported Stella, that'd be good. If you can ever get it, which you probably can't. Anyway, it's a great day today. Today's a great day. This is a great dish. Other people don't know, like, dishes like this. I invent them often, like, not, not once in a lifetime. A lot of people would invent this once in a lifetime and, be a, and, and think they're a god. Uh, you know, I'm inventing shit like this every couple of weeks, but it's great. Trust me, it's great. It really it is. Anyway, I recommend you go ahead and make it, but you will need you will need to make some of these before you do. Easy to make, really easy. Just cut them in quarters, cover them in salt. Salt, salt, more salt, and a bit of water. Squash them down, all good. Uh, yeah, I'll be back next week with uh, the pumpkin pie.